All right, so now we're doing linear regression. Basically, it's when you take a scatter plot and you get the best line of best fit. All right, so let's see how we do this. Um, you're going to use Excel to get our regression equation. So here's some data which um, you can copy into Excel. So you may need to um, open Excel right now and uh, pause the computer for a second, enter this data. All right, so I'm going to switch over to my Excel. Here I have it. I just cut and pasted the uh, little table there. So I would start entering all this data, but actually I don't have to because I um, actually saved it already. So here we go. And then also it's good to give your everything titles. So here's age in months. Here is uh, average height. That's in centimeters. And then up at the top, I give it an overall title. So mean height versus age. All right, so it's not necessary for the calculations, but it makes it look a little nicer. So here's all you do. Make sure you pay attention to this part. I'm going to highlight, including the text, because it knows that those are titles. I'm going to highlight my numbers. I'm going to go up here to where it says um, home, layout, all that stuff. Um, if you don't see those things, you click on it twice and it's there. So we're going to go to charts, and I want... Oh good, it doesn't give me what I want here. I want marked scatter. So we go to other. Marked scatter is what we're looking for. So you want this one. Okay, click that. And it makes your chart for you right there. Okay, it automatically starts with an X uh, scale of zero. And you can change this all around. So what I want to do is um, I maybe I don't want to see all the way to zero. So I format the axis. And I'm going to have it start at um, 10. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Um, okay, that's fine. Now here's the key. To get your regression line, you click on one of your little data points here. You have to right-click on it. So I right-click on it, see how it's selected? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add trend line. Okay. So when it does that, this box pops up, and there's all different types of data. So not everything is linear, but we're dealing with linear. It strongly suggests a linear relationship. So we're going to go with linear, and then we're going to go with options. Okay. So we want options. And what you're going to do is you want to display equation on chart and display the R squared value. So make sure both of these are clicked. Okay, once you've done that, you see it popped up over here. So now we hit OK. And then that's it. And you can do all sorts of different things to play with the font of this, make it large or small or whatever. Um, you can have that box or not. doesn't matter. Um, obviously, you can resize everything. If you enter this into a Word document, the Word document um, knows all the stuff that Excel does. So you can actually still play with the chart. Um, I'm going to copy this and put it in my slideshow. So, Smart Notebook does not know what I just did here. So here we go. Now let's answer. Let's analyze some of this using the similar stuff we did for analyzing scatter plots. Okay, so based on what we did, if you entered the data correctly, you should have got the exact same equation as me because this isn't like the scatter plots where or the line of best fit where we get kind of close. This is exact. So our equation is uh, y equals 0.64, no, my bad, um, equals um, 0.6343x plus 64.928. And um, I forgot to tell you what this was. This is... Um, I guess in like Egypt or something, there was some recording of data. So age is in months. Make sure this is, you realize this is months, so it's like 18 months is a year and a half old. The heights are in centimeters, and I don't remember what the study was for. Um, so what is the slope of the regression line, and what does it mean in the context of the equation? Well, the slope of our regression line is right here. So that our slope is a point six three four three. 
All right, and what does it mean in the context of our equation? That means um, for every increase in the x, we have this many units increase in y. So for every increase of month and age, so for every increase of one month in age, the height increases, so the average height of our individuals increase by 0.6343 centimeters. So basically they're growing 0.63 centimeters per month. Our R value. Now I want you to notice right here, this gives us R squared. All right, that's because we can use R squared for any of those things, but um, for any type of model. But for linear, we, it's actually more, more better to look at R. So what we're going to do is, since R squared is um, this number, what we need to do is take the square root, right? We have to unsquare it. All right, since we want R, we don't want R squared. We've got to unsquare it, which means taking the square root. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to do that on my calculator right now, square root of 0.98631, and that gives me 0.9931 uh, is plenty of significant figures. Okay, so that is a wicked good R value. <clears throat> okay, so all R values are between zero, or between negative one and one. All right, so our R value tells us how good the data matches the line. How close is it to be? If all our data was in a perfectly straight line, we have an R value of exactly one. Or if our data was going downhill, so if it was a negative correlation, so for every increase in x, we went down in y, so it was like a negative slope. We would, perfect r value would be negative 1. So r is always between negative 1 and 1. All right. I mean, I guess you can put the equals too, but chances are it will never be actually equal to a perfect data. Um, so this gives us a very strong correlation because we're very, very close to 1. Okay, about 0.95 and above is very strong. Uh, moderate would be... Anything between around 0.5 and 0.95. Weak is anything less than that, or um, anything less than like a quarter. 0.25 is there's not really any correlation. Um, and it's positive because see how that's a positive number here. Now actually, it's this will always be a positive number because we're taking a square root here. So it's positive because our slope is positive. Okay. So based on the equation, what is the predicted height for a 36 month old? Well, just go to your calculator, plug that in, 0. 0.643, or 6343 times 36, plus blah, 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 gives us 87.76. Um, does that make sense? So why don't we take this and convert it to inches? So we have to divide by... 2.54 and that's almost 35 inches that rounds up to 35 inches should a 36 month or a 3 year old be about 35 inches or about 3 feet yeah that makes sense I guess um, alright what's the y intercept of our regression equation well our y intercept is right here alright so the y intercept is uh, 64.928 so our y-intercept is when the x value is 0. So if we were to continue that back and let the uh, all the way back to x equals 0, since we have age and height, uh, when the age is 0, that would be like when it's born, right? So we're saying that that's what it stands for in the context of this problem is... Um, at age zero, or when it's born, what is its initial height? So let's look at uh, what's 64.928. 
and divide that by uh, 2.54 to get inches because I don't really know centimeters that well. All right, so 25.5 inches. Um, that could be a newborn. It's a pretty big baby, I think, actually. I think it's bigger than most. So maybe this model doesn't extrapolate backwards perfectly. Maybe, you know, babies grow a real lot at the beginning. They get longer really quick and then sort of come out to this consistent growth pattern. So maybe it's not linear as you get back towards newborns. Um, but does it make sense? Mm, sure. Um, basically, for a question like this, it depends on how you justify your answer. All right, so if you say that 25 inches is way too big, you know, my baby was like 19 inches when she was born, that's six inches bigger, well, then that's a good justification. You could say that it doesn't make sense, as long as you're showing some thought here and it's applying to the problem. Um, what is the x-intercept? So what you would do here is you would just take your equation. Um, the x-intercept is when your height is zero, so that's when the y value is zero, so you just plug in zero for y, and that equals this so then I subtract this from each side I'm being a little lazy here because I'm running out of room and time and I don't want to waste yours or mine so we have 64 negative 64.928 equals 0.64343 x so divide both sides by that Whoa. And what do we get? All right, and that equals 102. So what does that tell us in the context of the problem? So, so I just want to resize my page. Okay, I guess not. Um, so when y is 0, it means when would they have a 0 height? Okay, so that doesn't really make sense because babies are born um, not with a zero height. They're around 20 inches long. And even um, in the womb, you know, nine months of growth, is they're, they're changing always. So height isn't necessarily going to be a consistent linear pattern. This says, oh, this is a negative, my bad. This says at negative 102 months, so 102 months before they're born, they would be zero height. And that clearly does not make sense because... 102 months is almost nine years, and that would be, um, women would not like that. That would be a very long gestation. I think that would be rough. So, no, this does not make sense. And there's really no way to justify that and say that it makes sense. All right, so just a little discussion here on residuals. So we've done all the analysis uh, hopefully you watched how I got it from the Excel equation. It's just right, highlight the data, um, tell it to go to a marked scatter, and then once you do that, you right-click on the point and tell it to add trend line, and make sure that you um, tell it to show the trend line. Okay, and if you right-click on any of these things, you can um, format anything you want here, right? So format trend line, format text, you can... You know, make this all kinds of cool looking if you want. Like, that's what I did here is I just changed a few things. So net, lastly, we're going to talk about the residuals, which is a pretty simple concept, okay? So let's look at... Um,